Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Jake. I use he or him pronouns. Um, start a little timer for me as well. Um, so I'm going to be just chatting about regenerative education, our approach to it in the BC public education system here. But I'm a, an integrative life and leadership coach, a meditation and mindfulness instructor and facilitator of eco-connective practice, really working to serve our conscious transition to regenerative and emergent futures through education, leadership, being, and um, supporting change agents, wayfinders to live meaningful, balanced, authentic lives and increase our impact so we can have fun, do good work, um, and stay healthy and, and flourish along the way. And that comes from a, a line of experience of 10 to 15 years in different change making and activism capacities, anything from chaining myself to equipment and being arrested to doing elections work, climate campaigning, um, winning municipal climate motions, all of that sort of campaigning uh, rah rah energy. Uh, along the way, I burnt out like many of us do. Um, and I realized that a lot of my allies and even me were saturated in the same degenerative cultures, which um, burn us out, our living system of our being. And so I wanted to begin working with the internal worlds to um, help, help us live more flourishing spiritual lives that are aligned and connected. Um, because I believe what we see on the outside, uh, living system breakdown is mirrored on the inside. Uh, so that's the work I do today. And I'll just do a little screen share. There we go. So I've already sort of acknowledged where I am, but here's a, a map. So I'm again on Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam and Squamish traditional territory here in so-called Vancouver. And just as we begin chatting about uh, regenerative education, important to remember that a regenerative worldview and way of being is inherently indigenous. Uh, and so bringing in and honoring and following the leadership of indigenous peoples uh, is extremely important. And for me, regenerative uh, transition to regenerative education is actually uh, decolonizing at the same time. Ooh. All right, there we go. So just taking stock of where we're at here, uh, our living systems are breaking down. And by that, I don't just mean climate. Uh, we tend to focus on climate, but I also mean our personal, psychological, social, somatic, uh, all living systems are breaking down. Ecological, what that might look like is broken social systems, poverty, inequity, economic collapse, the rise of mental health disorders, or more prevalent physical disease, ecological destruction, and spiritual poverty, or a sense of lack of purpose, free-floating anxiety. And what's fueled this are our core stories of separation, which are deep within our paradigm, underpinning all of our systems, the separation of self from other, so uh, as we move into regenerative education, bringing in more collectivism, more than individualism, bringing in biocentric approaches and ecological consciousness instead of this anthropocentric humans only approach, um, letting go of this overbearing patriarchal um, masculine energy society and including and honoring the feminine. Uh, healing parts and holes so instead of seeing in reductionism um, bringing in holism and systems thinking. Instead of being so focused on the inner or the sorry the outer the material and matter, how can we bring in the immaterial inner spirit energy intuition and the animism of nature? And uh, lastly, instead of being so focused on our heads, which unfortunately this presentation will be very heady, um, how can we bring in the left brain and and honor other ways of knowing creativity, relationality, feelings, and big picture thinking? So a question we live into as we're going through this journey of what does this look like is how can education serve the transition from a life destroying society to a life affirming global family. And it's important to note that um, the next century even sooner is going to be and already is increasingly uncertain volatile challenging and ambiguous. Uh, ambiguous. So the current model is not up for the task of preparing communities to navigate crisis and solutions there's no roadmaps for. We need resilient and creative communities who, are, who have capacities able to thrive and create uh, in this way. 
So how can we teach for a greater capacity for transformation of self, community, and world while increasing resilience and agency to navigate this very uncertain, volatile, ambiguous, and challenging future? For me, it's teaching a way of thinking rather than what to think, which is the current model, and being which fosters that resilience, enlivens creativity and flourishing, empowers agency and authenticity and inter and connection, and expands capacity for transformative action. So we like to focus on the head, heart, and hands um, pedagogy. So what is regenerative, if you're unfamiliar? Um, all of life is regenerative. It's uh, life seeks to create the conditions for more life to continuously renew itself, transcend into new forms, and flourish amid ever-changing life conditions. Sustainability usually means we do more harm, but that means we end up sustaining existing systems. So regenerative is about aligning with nature and living systems principles to allow those systems to self-restore, self-revitalize, and to support the forever potential and capacities of living, of living systems, by which I mean people, communities, ecology, and climate, to continuously thrive, evolve, and regenerate. Regenerative education then nurtures the skills and capabilities, knowledge, values, and ways of thinking and being necessary for thriving communities, and it nurtures the inner and outer life of individuals, communities, and societies, while fostering right relationships supportive of the continued thriving of living systems now and forever. Another question we live into is in a world of stressed systems, body, souls, and planet, what role can the education system play in the regeneration of these systems? Now I have a very texty, I've intentionally left this here because we don't have a lot of time. And if you wanna screenshot it just to consider it after, feel free. But here are some of the sort of tenants we've come up with and which show up in our resources that be the change, uh, which I'll come to later. So regenerative education experientially engages and develops our students' capacity to inquire, understand, and tap into the intelligences of their mind, emotion, body, and spirit, this whole being learning. It fosters the development of life-affirming values, worldviews, and engages critical thinking. And it engages this, our students' natural gifts, interests, and authentic character, expressions, and passions, creativity, and their unique contributions to the world. It also continuously cultivates just and reciprocal relationships with other individuals, communities, and ecosystems. It's place-based, locally attuned, and justice-oriented, and it specifically will prioritize reconciliation and indigenous leadership. It's environmentally regenerative, so engages actions, relationships, cultures, and values which restore, preserve, and regenerate local ecosystems, and increases community capacity to exist with positive impact on ecology and climate. It's holistic, so it's tapping into living systems thinking, seeing in holes and relationships rather than parts and machine-like function. It bridges intergenerational wisdom, breaks down silos of knowledge, um, engages many ways of knowing, including intuitive or emotional versus just um, headspace. And it fosters collective learning and understanding and assessing and grounds in relationships, dialogue, and co-creation so that we can move beyond individualism and, and re-honor collective being. It grows our individual and community capacities to sense, respond, adapt, innovate, create, or otherwise thrive amid ever-changing conditions and builds personal and community resilience. And lastly, it's attuned to the real world. So the real and unique, unique needs, desires, and context of students, their communities, and our wider collective context. That means that every bioregion might be different, every community might be different, and what's true today might not be the same need in 30 years. Things might change. So sensing and responding is inherently a living systems principle. And so as educators, we should constantly be sensing into what's needed and looking for the feedback to guide us. Um, so I'll just take this down so that I don't have to look at a PowerPoint anymore. I can see you. <laughs> Um, some of the things we're specifically trying, um, I'll have to be quick here, but um, so living into the questions and avoid that tendency to want to control and be perfect, speak to what it looks like, really name it when we see it, honor what's present from a trauma-informed perspective. There is a lot of collective trauma that we're at the same time unraveling as we go through this transition, so slowing down to become present with it is important. Engaging system feedback, um, so this might be from teachers, students, district folks, teachers union, ministry people, 
um, asking the system and, and tapping into the collective intelligence to help guide the vision and also to co-create the vision and the way forward, um, a way forward into many futures. There is no one future. And embrace a possibility mindset versus a problem mindset. Tend, uh, when we think too much in problems, we tend to re-manifest the problems. So it's like, what do we want more of rather than what do we just want less of? And we tap into transformative pedagogy and weave regenerative principles into pedagogy and praxis. Lastly, uh, identifying uh, intervention points in the system where energy could be freed up to allow for what seeks to emerge to come through. And that's an approach in terms of actual specifics. Uh, here are just a couple of quick things. So we embody regenerative leadership in our organization, living into what's fun, uh, feeling passions, creating compassionate cultures, meaning making in our work. We lead transformational pro DEs where we teach not just pedagogy, but also engage the teachers in their own experiential learning, tapping into intuitive and emotional processes so that they can take that work and bring it into the classroom. And we've also played with student-led proteas, flipping the classroom where students actually teach the teachers what they need and have the system teach back. Uh, a couple more resources you can check out on our website. They're all free to access when you register. A huge bank of resources filled with transformative pedagogy built classroom-ready resources that support um, head, heart, hands approaches, connecting global issues to local activities and actions. And then from a systems change perspective, we also are working on a mycelium network, uh, building systemic capacity to sense and respond by um, tapping into nodes and people and stakeholders, decision makers, teachers, students um, to share their knowledge and co-builds um, and share resources, share knowledge, share experiences, celebrate. Mm -hmm.